Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we'll be taking a much closer look at the two figures that were included with the vintage collection HasLab Razor Crest. I don't know about you, but I am ready to open these figures. When the Razor Crest was first announced way back when, my original plan was to open these figures. But once I received my crest, the two figures inside were in such nice condition that I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Which has been very frustrating because I really do want these figures for my open collection. Specifically, the Jawa Elder. And not just because I love Jawas, but because he is essential to some scenes from The Mandalorian. And since I've recently created these nice articulated Jawas, it would allow him to sit cross-legged and recreate that scene where he bargains with Mando over the stolen parts. And if you're interested in making your own articulated Jawas, definitely check out my previous video. So as you can see, my two original Razorcrest figures are in nice acrylic cases for safekeeping, which meant I've been keeping an eye on the secondary market for a nice opener opportunity. And with a little patience, I was very fortunate to get this pair of figures on an excellent bid. And both cards have a little bit of damage, so I don't feel that bad about opening them. So let's begin by taking a look at the cards. And here you have the off-world Jawa Elder on a nice Mandalorian card with a fantastic image of the character just after he sliced open that Mudhorn egg in the show. You can see the figure on its bubble looking pretty awesome. Not much different than the standard Jawa release. You can see that he comes with extra accessories. He comes with the original egg, a sliced open version, his knife that he uses to cut it open, and the two other blaster rifles and the included pistol. He also comes with his unique necklace that makes him different than the standard release and it can be prominently seen on the card art. And on the back we have his number, HasLab number 002, and another image of the character holding the Mudhorn Egg, as well as a nice description of the character. I really like this back of the card. I also really like when, you know, there's double images, one on the front and back. And I wish it was something that Hasbro would consider doing more often. So all in all, a very awesome card with a cool figure that I am excited to get opened. And moving on, we have this lovable character that many have come to know as Baby Yoda. But his name pill here says Grogu the Razor Crest. And we have him on a nice Mandalorian card with a fantastic image of him coming down the ramp of the Razor Crest. I originally thought that this image is from Season 1, Episode 5, when he was left alone in the Tatooine hangar bay and first meets Pelimoto. The only thing I couldn't match up, actually, is his facial expression. He's much more tired and groggy looking in that scene, whereas here you can see he's got a nice smile going on. But the sunlight and exhaust all match that scene, but um, I just couldn't quite figure it out, so... If you know what scene specifically this is from, please let me know in the comments down below. Moving on, we have the figure on its nice bubble with its vac metal pram looking real cool and shiny. Very excited to have that and add it to my collection. We also have a little bowl there. I believe that's his bone broth bowl. So very cool. Not much else to that. Just very, very tiny little figure. On the back, he is HasLab number 001, with an awesome image of him and the Mandalorian inside the Razor Crest. I think that's a very appropriate image to have for this HasLab project, and it looks awesome. And then, of course, we have a small description of the character. So as you can see, there's a little bit of damage up here on the front of this Grogu card, but also it has some very noticeable damage on the back. So. A huge reason of why I feel pretty okay opening this card. You know, it's not it's not in the best of condition and I really want to have these cards opened. And here you can also see the damage on the Jawa Elder. It's got some serious veining right there as well as here. Very noticeable. Pretty bad ding right there. Uh, I think that is it for the most part, but as I said, both of these cards have a little bit of damage and that is the reason why I feel very comfortable opening them. So let's get on with it and free them from those bubbles.
And here we have our Razor Crest figures, free from their bubbles and paired together with a bunch of other wonderful Mandalorian offerings from the Vintage Collection. So I just gotta say, despite these figures not being drastically different from the offerings we already have, I'm still very excited to have them in my loose collection. Who isn't, you know, excited to add more figures to their collection? And it's just those nice extra details that are kind of really excellent to see in person and be able to actually hold and touch. So let's take a look at the Jawa Elder, who as you can see is definitely not very different than the standard Jawa release. They both have the same bandolier with little ammo pouches on the side, their soft goods are identical, and the hoods are also the same with the little tie off on the back. The only thing that I did notice is that the Jawa Elder looks like his face sits a little further back in the hood. You can notice this when compared to the standard Jawa. I did take a look at my carded sample of the Jawa Elder and it looks like his face is also set a little further back in the hood. I'm not sure if that was just like a factory production issue or if it was intentional. Other than that, the figures are pretty much identical, except for the accessories that the Jawa Elder comes with. And as you can see, he comes with his special blade for cutting open mudhorn eggs and his unique little necklace that I think looks really awesome. There's some really nice detail on that. It's very difficult to see because it's so tiny, but it's very cool and it helps him look different than the rest of the tribe. He's also got the same articulation as the standard Jawa, so not much to that. I'm sure you may be familiar with all of that articulation already. Also included with this figure are the same rifles and blaster pistol that come with the standard Jawa release. So the Jawa Elder comes with two mudhorn eggs, an unopened version, and then this one split at the top with lots of egg yolk running down the side. I think it's really cool that we got this scene specific accessory that also just makes the Jawa Elder that much more special of a vintage collection offering. And here you have Grogu in his vac metal pram looking pretty awesome. I like this sculpt of Grogu. I think it looks really cool. I like the expression he's got on his face. It's like a nice little smile, smirk going on. He looks kind of happy. It's very, very similar to what's going on on the card, so I appreciate that. And here's a comparison with one of the previous Grogu's from the Mandalorian build-up pack. And as you can see, the facial expression is different, and now his ears are perked up. I also noticed that the paint apps on the collar and the inner ears are different from the previous release as well. That's something I wish they would make a little bit more consistent when it goes with Grogu. Usually it's his robe that's always a different color between these releases, and that's just something I wish would be a little bit more standard. I don't mind like maybe the bottom being a dirtier color or something, you know, as time goes on. I'm not sure if anyone's doing Grogu's laundry, but at least the collar, because that just sticks out a little bit to me. Another lovely detail about this Grogu figure is that he has a little ball from the gear shifter in the Razor Crest molded into his hand, and I gotta say, with that facial expression and holding it up like that, this figure looks pretty awesome. And here's a comparison of the two different prams, which are very similar in design, except the Razor Crest one has this added lip on the back. Taking a closer look at the inside, it's got some really nice detail going on. This part is actually removable, which is not something you can do on the previous release, and it's got some really cool detail in there as well. It does kind of like move around a little bit. Um, earlier when I was showing it, I did have some Elmer tack in there just to hold it in place, but it's not too crazy. But I really like the interior. I think it looks pretty cool. The back part is not removable like the previous release. Maybe that would interfere with the back metal paint job, making it easier to get chipped or damaged. Taking a closer look at this, I originally thought there was something wrong with my sample, but it looks like some added detail, probably from when Quill welded this thing together and just put it together quickly on the crest, so those are kind of cool details. As you can see, the vac metal just shines really nice, so it's awesome to see this feature back in the vintage collection. I know that's something people have requested and really want to see, but I know it's also difficult for Hasbro to pull these things off, so I imagine there's a lot of work involved and quality control is probably difficult. If you take a closer look at my sample, it kind of looks like there's a little chip right here or just an area where it wasn't painted. Um, so this is the type of thing, you know, with quality control issues. And I can imagine it's just difficult getting this thing a vac metal paint job. I also noticed that there was a little area on the top here where it also didn't seem to be painted. 
It's a little difficult to get in focus. But it's very, very minor and just something you can only see with your own eye. But the one on the other side is definitely a little bit more noticeable. It's just, it's not that major and it doesn't really bother me. I've seen some images of people's prams that are have a far worse paint job, so I'm happy with what I got and I will try my best to make sure this doesn't get damaged. And here's a look at the top of the prem, which is also vac metal and looks nice and sleek. And you can also place the lid on top and snap it shut, which is pretty cool. It's definitely tricky to get this thing back open because I just, I don't want to damage this thing and uh, you kind of got to get your fingernail in there and just get it open. So like I said, this is a really nice paint job and I'm sure over time it could see some wear and damage so I probably won't be putting the lid on and off too many times. And the last accessory is this tiny, tiny little soup bowl for Grogu to have some bone broth. Now that is an extremely small accessory. Uh, it's really cool that we got it. I will probably just like display it on a table like this, you know, since he can't really hold it. but. It's definitely cool to get it, and I'm happy to do a scene with Grogu having some soup. And there you have it, two incredible figures that were included with this HasLab Razor Crest. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a closer look at these figures out of the packaging. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think I'm crazy for opening these figures? Did you happen to open them yourself? And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and I'll see you on the next video.